Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tinkerverse. So today I want to take a look and show you how to do these cool uh, text masking designs like you're seeing all over online these days. And we're going to do it using nothing but light burn. So stick around. Okay, so let's get started. Um, Lightburn has some pretty awesome built-in features for dealing with images. So I'm going to go ahead and import an image, or in this case I'm actually going to paste it in from my clipboard. And let's get this size down appropriately. Now this works on any raster based image, so JPEGs, GIFs, uh, bitmaps, PNGs. Um, so as long as you're dealing with an image, when you look up in the layers window it says image, you'll be able to apply this uh, to, to your image here. Um, and what masking does is masking will take any closed shape and uh, picture like laying a mat board down on a picture that masks out everything except for the shape that you want to see in the middle. So in this case, I'm going to do this as text, but you can do this with any other shape, um, any other polygon, as long as it's a closed shape. Uh, so in this case, let's do, I'm going to do the word Sanibel, since this is the Sanibel Island Lighthouse. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to make that a line mode. So uh, it doesn't work if I've got fill, and you'll see that in a little bit. But if I, if I do something with a fill mode, it doesn't allow me to apply the mask. But if I do it as a line mode, um, it will. So the next thing I want to do is take my letters, and I'm going to stretch them out. And I'm trying to find about the shape that I want to give me a fair amount of detail within each letter um, and still capture the essence of the picture itself. So that's, I'd say that's a good starting place. So once I have that roughly sized, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a copy of my letters and I'll show you why later, but I'm just gonna control D and I'm gonna move that off to a tool layer and then come up here and turn off show to hide it. Uh, just so I have that for later. And next up, I'm gonna select the image first, and I'm gonna hold shift, and I'm gonna select the text. And it's important that you select it in this order. You have to select your closed shape that you're gonna be using as your mask as the last, uh, the last thing you select. So you select the image, and then you select your shapes. And once you've done that, you can right click on your image and say, apply mask to image. And what it'll do is it'll mask out everything that is not contained within those letters. Um, now I actually hit this just about where I want it, but if I wasn't happy with that, you can see that I can still move the image around within the mask, or I can change the mask as it overlays the image. So if I select the letters, I can actually uh, stretch the letters or shrink the letters or do whatever I need to do until I make this a design that I am happy with. Uh, so in this case, I'm actually happy with right where it is. I think the uh, image overlays nicely, or the, the letters overlay nicely for the image, and I'd say that that's pretty good. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do when I'm satisfied with this, I'm 100% happy with the positioning and the shape and the size, I'm going to right-click somewhere in the image, and I'm going to say Flatten Image Mask. Um, you'll see I can actually do a remove mask from image and that'll actually back us up and pull the mask out uh, and give me my full image again. But in this case, I want to flatten the image and commit it. So once I do that, it merges those two layers down and effectively cuts out everything that was not contained within those letters. So think of these letters or think of your closed shape as a cookie cutter. And you're initially just kind of placing it on there to make sure everything is where you want. And when you're ready to finally cut through that cookie, you're going to push the cutter down through and remove all the scrap. Um, so that's effectively what I've got here. So now the next step is I want to put that thick black border around there that I had. Uh, so I'm going to bring back in that tool frame that I duplicated earlier. And just to show that just gives me my outline again. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select the tool, <clears throat> the, uh, the letters here on the tool frame, and I'm going to do an offset. And I'm going to do, I think 0.5 millimeters is fine for this case. Um, I want to do, because I've got interior shapes in my letters, I want to turn off outer shapes only so that I get the insides of the B and the A. 
<clears throat> I want to do both directions. If I don't do both directions, uh, it doesn't give me quite what I want. Um, it'll go outward, but it'll be the wrong for my insides of my letter. So I want to do both. And, uh, you know, this is personal choice, round or bevel or contour. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, and then I'm going to leave select resulting objects on so that when I hit OK, you'll see that it created those outlines for me. And I'm going to go ahead before I touch anything else. This is currently selected and I'm going to move that back to my layer one here. So now I've got the outline and then I can change that layer to a fill. So now I've got my full outline. And then if I bring back in my image, you'll see that everything is, uh, is exactly where we started. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and control G to group this, and I'm just resetting my view to give us a nice centered look at what we've got here. And so there you go. So that's using the apply mask to image tool to create um, really, you know, these, these cool little text maskings that you're seeing on, you know, sites like Canva or Photoshop tutorials uh, right in Lightburn. And there you go. So at this point, you could choose to engrave this. You could even add one more layer to cut if you wanted to cut these out individually and have individual letters. So there you go. This was a, a quick hit for you guys. Hopefully you found something useful out of this. And uh, until next time.